Free run episode 22. Genji Koko Motte, Daichi Jishken was surely on the Sru. Daichi Jishken Goka Shawa. I'm surprised and a, a, a little bit disappointed by how many of you are still alive. Wow, also that ends well. Except for those people who were killed by birds, but who cares about them? We can only really grow to care about characters for whom we've seen backstory. If the Hunter x Hunter test is any clue as to what's to come, following levels of the exam will include running, more running, fighting convicts, we already have the turning on each other, we already have the stealing, mental deception, and more running. Or this guy's just gonna get increasingly frustrated that students aren't dying, and he's gonna just drop the pretense and make it a battle royale to the death. Episode 22, Future Enemies. Interesting. Perverts. <laughs> oh man, that feeling when you have like one day off of work, finally. He's earned it, though, for real. Why was it terrifying? Oh, don't, oh come on. I was asleep. What are you gonna do about it? Yes, and? Oh, that's... Oh, why did you drink juice? Oh, Stark, you've really... Of all the terrible things you've done, the humanity. This is one of the things in my life I've had to just accept because I can't change it. And like, it's just easier to change myself than to try to change the world. But I don't keep a normal schedule. I don't keep a normal meal schedule. I don't care about a lot of things other people seem to care about, which is usually fine. But then every now and then I come into contact with like, you know, a girlfriend or just someone's with me for an extended period of time and there's this palpable sense of like what are you <laughs> why do you live this way <laughs> sometimes i sleep until the evening in particular i really enjoy nighttime just for whatever reason i feel the most at peace the most mentally awake and creative at night so i don't really mind missing daylight at all except that society sort of runs on on light i was talking to a friend of mine today about how one of the most difficult things about having a girlfriend is that girls need to eat <laughs> like it's really hard when we eat a meal and then later we have to eat another meal but we already had one last night at like 4 a.m i went to the convenience store and i ate microwavable chicken and rice and a microwavable burrito and i thought i could never get away with this with anyone else i don't know if i could travel with fern freeman we'd get along sark we'd get along fern i don't know I feel like we're not a match in a weird way i feel similar about how i felt watching avatar with katara people who, who like really need structure and like expectation of the day and their schedule it's rough yeah, see, Freeman gets it. Damn, Fern is just dominant. Are we squeezing in a side quest in between stages of the exam arc? Oh, does he live here? These are my teeth. I don't need them anymore. <laughs> oh, is it sugar? Sugar cubes? <laughs> a lot of the the people in the exam arc so far, they gave a really violent and kind of terrible first impression and then turned out to be really sweet and gentle. Except for Yubel so far. That's tough, buddy. Sort of a sour attitude. Maybe forget the mage thing. It's way more basic than that. Why is he salty? Big softy. Softies everywhere. Oh, screw you then. I mean, I think the problem is she thinks a lot of it. Oh, that's I mean, there is something very Ahsoka about this, right? Yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. I want to really enjoy the killing to its fullest. Evil aside, there is something I can relate to in the Yubo Hisoka thing, in a way, I guess. And I don't think I'm alone in this. Sometimes people who are really awful or have really dark qualities about them can win me over if there's something really exceptional about them. People like Yubo and Hisoka, they've got that thing, you know, that spark for life, that eye for adventure and thrill, what the world has to offer. It's probably just that it's filtered through an extremely selfish lens so that everything sort of exists for their pleasure. But because they have and value that thing, whatever it is, people become valuable and interesting to them if they also have that spark and they stop being enemies or obstacles or just things to be dispensed with and sort of seize seize attention they become points of fascination <laughs> She learned it. Wow, she's really adept. Whoa, that is powerful Nen. That, yeah, that's such a great fit. If she can empathize with him, she can learn it. Oh, she's just a natural. I don't think she's dim-witted. I mean, I think it's already clear she's already intrigued. How do you defend against this? If it's just based on her feeling, not talking also could be counterproductive. Not talking could also make her like you and get your skill? Is that how it works? I would so fall for Yubo in real life. I would be taking her to this restaurant, whatever this 80-year-old restaurant is. And I would tell myself that I know her dark side enough that I'm protected from it, which would be self-deception x self-deception. But it would be really fun. And then I'd die. Speaking of liking terrible people because they have something exceptional, one thing I find exceptional and I'm really drawn to is like I make my own rules. I make my own life. It's just exciting when people have a worldview at all that they formed on their own, even if it's a terrible one. People will repeat worldviews that are great, but there's something a little bit hollow about it. I mean, it's not even that dissimilar from what I was just talking about with like, I need three solid meals. Like, yeah, I know, I've heard it. But why? Also, to give full credit to the character and her potential, while her name translates to evil and she's clearly being set up as sort of a, a villain type, all we've really seen her do so far that's questionable is killing bandits who are trying to steal from her and maybe more, which is not great and also it's clear she enjoyed it, which is concerning. But like, I wouldn't write her off totally as a character just yet as like evil, the end, though that's possible. <laughs> We're not enemies. Damn, that, that jumbo omu rice. Damn, that jumbo steak. It's better and better. Alright, kind of peaked at steak. To the same food. Wow, she's really good. Oh, interesting parallel between Himmel and Stark again. He held up his promise. Wait, she doesn't have a hand ぶつかってるんですか this is also almost definitely not what they're going for here, but a thought comes to mind in relation to the exam arc and teachers and students, which is that sometimes you don't want to make things about you. I 100% understand that temptation. And it's perfectly fine to want and receive accolades, but the, the purpose isn't your accolades. The purpose for the chef isn't the chef's accolades. The purpose for the chef is providing food that people really enjoy. The goal for a teacher isn't being respected as intelligent, looked up to and respected and revered or kowtowed to, but to contribute to the student's education. The esteem stuff comes as a a byproduct of doing the thing correctly. There's also probably some connection between how confident one is in what they're doing and how much they try to clamor or, or grab for re respect or esteem. Freewin is a great example of that never name dropping, never bragging about her accomplishments, not being concerned with anything outside of just the pursuit of her passion and also the development of her students. There's a lot in here about like, you know, trying to make a name for yourself versus doing great things and that creating a name for you. <laughs> Uh, be careful about being too happy, it's still anime. Though I totally got faked out by the first episode in that way. Oh, he did not keep his promise after all. Interesting conclusion to that little mini restaurant art. 
Things change. Change is inevitable. Can't hold on. Thanks, Dad. Granddad. Oh, they are on a date! Yeah, well, you gotta eat three times? Let me live. What money? Wow, that's, a, that's big. Oh. <laughs> that's hilarious. Skip. And there's no hope for us because Sina's not here. Have you tried desserts? Oh, I don't know. I was kind of blind leading the blind here. They just they don't have that relationship. I think you gotta resist. I think for it's becoming a tyrant. They kind of spoil her. I think maybe one of the, the solution, at least once, you just let her sit and brood it out. She gets rewarded every time for these little hissy fits. Imagine the insult of this, this poor guy. He was 100% fine minding his own business, now he's wondering what's wrong with him. Guess a lot of them live here. Oh, they love you. They're just expressing their love. But less spoiled than Fern. Look at, look at them not fighting. Oh, someone went to etiquette class. <laughs> oh, we were so close. How many does Fern want? Oh, can you just choose? Just you choose. Why do you set me up for failure? Fern requires bread and snacks. Oh yeah, he has no idea. Yeah, kinda. Are you more comfortable just in the woods with, a, with one dwarf? Good eye. He is great. Yeah, no doubt he has a lot of experience and has seen some terrible things, pervert, but it seems like he struggles with it a bit. Very humble of you. That's not it. That's always what it's going to be ultimately, that's fine. I mean, whatever, you know. I love it. I agree. And I think what Himmel embodies that he didn't directly say, like I was saying about the, the chef, where it's not about you. Like, if you're doing things right, the rest of the things you want will probably follow. I do feel there is a little bit of a danger in this of like, I'm going to help people. It can be a really noble intention, but because life is so complicated, if it's not centered around actually being good and understanding what good is and doing good things, you might just be meddling and making people's lives worse. One thing I believe that sometimes causes controversy in conversation is giving is best done from a place of strength. To make that clear, a counter example would be like giving for an expectation of praise or a certain image or something like that. When you don't actually want to be doing any giving, where you'll be resentful for not receiving something in return, it has to be actually channeled to what you feel is right and getting positive feedback from feeling like you're doing what's right. And I think Himmel is that person. I think that's obvious. And if he wants to be remembered and idolized for those things, that's fine because that doesn't seem to be the, the origin of his actions. His actions seem to be rooted in something much stronger, which is a sense of duty and obligation. And the thing about helping others, while we represent this concept on a very grandiose scale, like Himmel the hero, it doesn't have to look grandiose at all to be grandiose. There's an infinite 
ripple effect of all actions, all deeds that are way bigger than anyone can imagine. And humanity will always, at the end of the day, be an amalgamation of everyone's actions. And the best thing you could ever hope for, the highest honor, is to be a really strong, proud node on that grid so that you know for yourself, looking at yourself, that you were that person. The rest is sort of circumstantial, you know, like, were you in a position to enter a stage where you could be the grand hero? That seems to me like something you can't really choose, but you can choose to do the best with the life you have, the situation you have, and do good in the specific context of your life and your environment. And it ends up being the highest possible honor that's sort of binary, like being born into a circumstance where you have the stage to become a grand hero or have a really epic story doesn't make you better than someone who, who did the same thing, but was born sort of into a circumstantial track that provided less of a glamorous stage, let's say. That is the controllable essence, the controllable thing you can extract that is in one's own hands that one has agency over. And if I had to guess, I'd say the grandest heroes, they probably get that and they respect people not for the glory and glamour of their lives, but for how much of that person they become. An addendum to this that I think is so cool is it doesn't even have to be help necessarily. It can be as simple as expressing your gifts and who you are as honestly and as fully as possible. And I'm fully convinced that that alone will have those very, very same ripple effects by extension of the, the goodness of the source. Here's that goodness. And then also the... I really think what the thesis is going to be, or maybe it's just what I believe. The, the being remembered is something that will happen in effect, even if people forget your name and your face. And that's good enough. Don't remind me. If that's really true, I'll be a little bit disappointed. Contestants, fine. Enemies, no. But maybe that's nitpicking. Oh, okay. That's a dramatic delivery. Wait, I want to read it. This time it's in a more modest location. The ruins of the king's tomb. Which one is Sense again? Oh, we haven't met Sense. Okay. Okay, wait, wait, let me reserve judgment. As I said, it depends on the standard. If the standard is clear and that goal is clear, it's possible no one passes. Also possible that Sense is a tyrant. Oh, I got a new friend. I'm here for this Stark having fun arc. Oh, that sense. That's nice. I have a little more faith in her just from what we've seen so far about their through their uh, their dialogues. I'm fine with toughness, you know. I'm, I'm fine with toughness and harshness if the the correct goal is in mind. If it's really in service of the students or in service of whatever the goal is, and that goal isn't like I'm special because I'm an examiner or psychology professor or like our club becomes less exclusive if we let more than one person in, even if they're insanely qualified. Surprise, surprise. Uh, a non-fighting episode that I loved. Freerun takes a very good look at what I think is a difficult and serious question, like a painful question, or at first glance, it's a painful question, you know? Like at heart of it is the fact that life is impermanent. With that thought, initially there's this pro profound sense of meaninglessness, insignificance of one's life, futility in trying to do anything. But I think if you look a little bit closer, there is a beautiful answer there. And maybe there's something about it somewhere that's me coping. But I genuinely do feel this, I believe it. And it gives me a lot of hope, feelings of beauty, and also determination and responsibility, which is a couple things at once. It's that the beauty is sort of in the whole, right? You, you are just a small part of it, but you're also an integral part of it. At the heart of it is appreciation for the beauty of humanity and the world and existence itself. And then just extreme gratitude that I get to be a part of that. I get to shape it and, and create it. And it ends up, contrary to the initial reaction, being such a gargantuan task that suddenly you almost cannot be devoid of meaning. Though there will certainly be moments where you lose sight of it. Our names and faces all will be forgotten, but like are our names and faces the most important or most beautiful thing? If we agree that there's virtue in giving and selflessness, it was never really about us in the first place. And and furthermore, if everyone is impermanent and everyone is forgotten, why do we care if anyone remembers us anyway? Like, what do we care about the thoughts and opinions of impermanent things? The people who we initially want to remember us are themselves impermanent, and in a certain way of thinking about it, have no no greater or lesser life value than, than we have. Meanwhile, existence will always remember until there's nothing, if, if such a thing is possible. Existence has an eternal memory that cannot be forgotten. And so what more could you possibly ask for than the chance to participate in that consciously, deliberately, for the good? And what greater a reward is there than that in itself? And which is greater esteem, material rewards, having other human beings talk about you in the future, or being a part of this magnificent thing of which, by definition, has the maximum possible meaning and value there ever could be.